we went on the local scene to learn about the co-responder program in our communities. So this was already in existence for many years. It wasn't necessarily embraced as a state, right? So it was like just pockets of the Boston, greater Boston area that had this co-response program. But the reason why I think we've become so involved in it and really trying to grow this program to be bigger and bigger and bigger is because we realize the impact it has on folks. And we realize the importance of it. And I always say it this way. If you're dealing with someone who is mentally ill and having hallucinations, right? An officer goes to a training to be an officer to protect the individuals and protect the community, right? They're not trained as clinicians in mental health, right? So if I'm with that officer and they make sure the environment is safe, right, and there's nothing that's going to hurt me or hurt the patient or hurt anyone around them, let me do my job. And my job is I can tell you, is that person a risk to themselves and others? And they might present to you as though they're a risk, but I know that they're not. And so what happens is, is you're able to say, to the folks around and to the officer like, yeah, they're not well, but they're not at a point that they need to go anywhere. So let's get them some resources. Let's get them the help that they need. They don't need to go to the hospital. They don't need to go to an inpatient facility. So right now, about 70% of cases go to the hospital and 30% stay in the community. The goal is to shift that, right? 70 stay in the community, 30 go to the hospital. The 30 that are going to the hospital, the 30% are those really sick individuals that have no, that you know for a fact they need to go because they're not safe. We're where 70% we can handle, right? As a community behavioral health center, as a crisis team, we can handle that. We know how to handle individuals that are suffering from mental health and substance abuse. And as you can see from our office area, it's inviting. You don't realize that you're in a community behavioral health center, that you're in the crisis center, because we try to make the environment as comfortable for individuals as possible. We also want to go to your home, right? The co-response clinicians go to the homes because in a home, you feel like you're in your safe place. And when you're talking to someone and you're in your own home, in your own living room, in your own dining room, like you have that sense of like, okay, this is my environment. Like I have some sense of control over this. Where in a hospital setting, a lot of times no fault to the hospitals, but they're, they're like dealing with so many different things that sometimes privacy becomes an issue because people are in the hallway and they're talking to a social worker in the hallway about their like trauma. And the person on the other stretcher might hear some of that. And that's not a fault to the hospital. It's just the way that, you know, people utilize the emergency rooms right now. So we're really working hard on the co-response being a big piece of it, being out there and really talking about what we do and making sure that people hear it. I work the day shift and I think I see a lot of kids in, you know, with there's a behavioral issue at school or if they're struggling at school, I'll go um, to those calls. So a lot of times I think the day shift is more kid-based and um, the four to 12 might be more adults and um, some more like different situations, um, sh you know, struggling with substance use or, um, you know, suicidal ideation or things like that. So I think, uh, it definitely varies depending on the shift, for sure. Typically, the call comes over the radio and they either dispatch us to the call because it's a very clear cut, like either someone's you know struggling with safety, like having ideas of hurting themselves or others, or they're in crisis with a mental health um, issue of some sort, and we're dispatched to that call. Then once I'm there on scene, I'll do a regular, if I was a crisis clinician, I will do a regular evaluation and I often explain to people, I'm like, I am the same clinician as the clinician you would meet in a hospital. So I'm just doing that evaluation, but at your house or sometimes in a parking lot or anywhere really that we find them. And either I can just get them referrals um, for outpatient services or the um, crisis team will follow up with them for a few days after to check in, monitor them, or if they really need treatment, they'll go to the ER with us and um, wait for a placement in a treatment facility. And the thing that about co-response that works really well, and I think speaks to a lot of people and makes it a better experience, is that we can transport them by cruiser, and that 
just giving people the choice, like either you can go in an ambulance or a cruiser, that just makes the experience so much better for them because they feel like they have control over the situation. They can, um, you know, choose which way to go if they feel safer in an ambulance or if they don't want an ambulance and the fire truck and everybody showing up and making a big scene, they can just go in the cruiser with us and nobody has to really know about it. And a lot of people oftentimes opt for the cruiser, so that makes it better, yeah. I give huge kudos to Plymouth. I really give a big, I, so I am, Plymouth is near and dear to me. Um, because I worked in Plymouth for so many years and I just love this community even though I'm not from this area but working here for all these years I just really appreciate it um, so the fact that this town has just embraced this program um, that you know the town of Plymouth has been really good to us and um, and great to this code response program so I just see it becoming even bigger than what it is. I come up with these really crazy ideas all the time. I don't know if it's the Gemini in me, but I'm always coming up with some crazy ideas. So I started researching last year about different kind of mobile crisis teams out in the country and things that they do. And one of the things that I found is they have what's called the mobile crisis van. Um, and they have this in San Francisco, they have it in Chicago, but the cool part is, is the stats and the data that comes out of this. In my crazy world of my mind, I said, you know what, I think we can do this. So I um, did a whole PowerPoint and I presented it to our leadership team and said, how can we get funding to get these mobile crisis vans to work alongside with the police departments? And we got it. Um, and we got one for uh, Plymouth, we got one for Fall River, and we also, I will give credit to the, you know, the city of New Bedford, they supported us with the funding as well for New Bedford. So the way that I envision this, which I think is like, we still are in the process of finalizing who we're gonna go with to purchase the van. I didn't realize how into vans people were, like van life. Um, it's quite interesting, but what I envision is, a mobile crisis van with a clinician, a peer specialist, which is somebody with lived experience, and with a recovery coach. And the goal is that when the police are dispatching out, even if Abby goes out on that call, and she's like, oh, this person could really benefit from like a peer specialist recovery coach, right? And we can meet them there. And the van is a private area that they can come in and meet with somebody in the moment, right on site. And, and there might be times where Abby might be on a call and we're out there, the van's out there. So dispatch can call the van directly and say, hey, the clinician's caught up here, especially here, right? In the summertime, it's really busy. Abby's busy, send the van out. We can meet you there. We can meet the officer there. Um, we can meet the individual there. They can come into the van for an assessment right there, have the supports they need and never have to walk into the office because, and no one's gonna know what's happening inside that van because it's gonna be private. So that is my vision. And it is very grassroots. I said to myself, I can't believe I did this. I can't believe it's gonna happen, um, but it's gonna happen and I'm excited about it. And I think that I know for a fact the town of Plymouth is going to embrace this uh, and the police department's definitely going to embrace it. And I'm really excited about it, but I see this happening by the end of this year. If you enjoyed this video by The Local Scene, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.